Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. How a five-year-old child discovered his purpose in life. Hey, everybody, Joe Simons, like Diamonds back again, Salt Strong on Church. This is an amazing story, something that happened close to me personally. And I want to share this one because it is awesome. I have seen what what just this has done to this young boy who was five years old and literally just discovered his purpose in life, at least for now, which I'll talk about in a second. I've seen what it's done to him psychologically. I'm talking about he's literally waking up excited. This has been going on for what, three weeks now. He's waking up like an extra hour earlier with like more energy than ever before. Uh, It's wild to see this transformation all because he has something that he feels like he was put on this earth to do, even though it might even be silly at five years old. To him, it is real. It is incredibly exciting. And I've just, I've watched it change everything about him. I mean, his demeanor, his excitement, his energy, uh, everything has literally shifted all from one simple thing where he says, I'm going to do this when I grow up, essentially. And I'm sharing all this not to make you feel bad. If you're over age five and you haven't figured it out, that's 100% natural. In fact, I would be willing to bet it's probably the number one question I get from this podcast and from my book, Fishing for Happiness, is, hey, I'm struggling. I'm I'm 65, I'm 35, I'm 45, I'm 80. I, I still don't really know what my purpose is in life. I don't have like a written down mission statement and, and that's fine. And so this podcast, I'm gonna unpack what I've learned and what I've seen, even just from this example here with this five-year-old, I'm going to unpack all that to give you some ideas. So let's talk about this five-year-old. Looking back when you were five or seven or nine or whenever, just when you were young, what did you love doing as a child more than anything? What what came easy to you? What was natural? What what was something that that maybe someone said, if you really go back and, and look, maybe it was a compliment or someone says, man, you know, you're really good at that. Or maybe you overheard someone saying something, well, wow, well, so-and-so Josh is really amazing this, or, or Amy would just really excel at this. She, she it just comes easy to her. And, and I think one of the first things that we have to do is forget the money, forget the job, right? Because I think that's what confuses so many people. Oh, well, my mission has to be something I can earn a living at, or it's got to be my job. No, 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 100% no. There are some instances where it is. I believe I'm I'm kind of living, me personally, Joe Simon's living my purpose and my mission through both myself and through Salt Strong. Uh, but but that's that's almost kind of rare. Like you, you don't have to have your mission, your purpose, one hundred percent align or be the same thing as your job. There are plenty of people, including you know my parents, who had separate jobs but had separate internal uh, purposes and missions that had nothing to really do with their job. Their job was really a way to kind of fund their mission and their purpose in life, if uh, if that makes sense. So go back to to your childhood. W- what were things? that that you loved more than anything? What were the things that you could just sit there for hours and hours and do with, uh, without getting bored? And, and I'll, I'll explain what happened with this five-year-old. The five-year-old, in fact, is my son, Jackson. And, uh, and I did not try to, uh, to kind of put this on him or even talk to him about mission and purpose. That, that's the craziest thing. Uh, I had it on my list to do when he got a little bit older, but I thought five was a little bit too early to start talking about that stuff. And so he came home from uh, from camp here, from summer camp one day, and uh, this was a few weeks ago, and uh, he came home just real excited and he wanted to show us, you know, a little little note from uh, from his teacher. And uh, she had just commented that he's really, really exceeding uh, it, it building things, it just building blocks. And, and apparently he can just sit there for, for hours, you know, building things and not lose focus, which is tough for a, a five, it's tough for a 43 year old, but it's tough. It's really tough for a five-year-old to, to not lose focus, especially in this day and age with all the stuff going on at summer camp. And he just sit there and, and, and build. And so all it took was that little spark 
the teacher commenting that he's a good builder. And then we started saying that, well, Jackson, you, you are a good builder. And, and he is. I don't know that he's a prodigy or anything like that, but you know, everyone thinks their kid's always better than maybe they are. But certainly he he is a great builder. He's better than me. And he I've watched him when he's building those little blocks, those little magnetic blocks. I mean, he can sit there and one, he can he can build forever, but two, it it comes natural to him. For a five year old, he's building stuff that that I can, I can't do personally. That I lose patience or the whole thing collapses. Uh, it 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 is really really impressive. And so we just started kind of building him up here recently as well, and said, "Yeah, man, you you could be a builder." So all of a sudden, the other morning, he wakes up like an hour plus early, which is rare for him because he he usually likes to sleep in to the point we have to wake him up for school every day. And he wakes up like an hour early and he's like, and this is a five-year-old, mind you. And and you could see he was excited about something. I just assumed it was a dream that he had like a good dream because he's done that before in the past. And he's like, I, I, I know what I want to be when I grow up. I'm like, what? He's like, a builder. And and the whole day he talked about this, that I'm going to be a builder. And he started saying this. It was like, I told him, like, do we got to write it down? And I, he can't even spell yet, right? I mean, he, he knows letters, but he can't really write. And so I'm kind of showing him. I was like, man, you got to write this down when you get excited about something. So we're I'm kind of like holding his hand and writing down, I'm going to be a builder. And, and that night he goes to bed and he's like, all right, I'm going to be dreaming about big ideas on, on things I can build. And, uh, and the next morning, I, I assumed it might go away. He wakes up even more excited. He's like, I'm going to be a builder. I had some some big ideas last night, some exciting ideas. And, and I, I'm watching. He, I'm getting excited because he's excited. And so I was like, well, do you know, do you know what builders do? And he, he's like, well, they build things. And I was like, all right, let, let me show you. So I, I go over to YouTube and I, I pulled up a video. Uh, it was perfect. It was made for kids about what a, what a builder, like a, a developer does. And uh, so I'm showing him and he gets to see these blueprints and he's, and he knew his sister had some, some, basically some paper that looked like a, you know, like a blueprint and and envision like uh, a big blueprint on a table that kind of rolls out almost like a scroll that, you know, it's got uh, the, the ends that both kind of fold out. And uh, so he saw the guy doing that on TV and, and he goes, all right. And, And he went and got some of that paper and he's like, all right, don't look, don't look. And he was working on this for a couple hours and he built this is awesome. He built a hotel, you know, and he's like, here's the parking garage. And he had all this stuff thought out. It was obviously not something you could uh, truly build, but uh, it was fascinating to see how excited he was about being a builder. And uh, and, and this has gone on every day since. We're, we're now on multiple weeks of this. And, uh, and we ended up going uh, on the 4th of July weekend uh, down to Naples and, you know, stayed in a hotel. And he got really fascinated because they were doing some some construction there. They were doing a big renovation in the hotel. And uh, he saw the scaffolding. He's asking about everything. And he's just so excited. He's like, all right, I'm going to build a hotel underwater. And he's literally looking at the room that we're staying in and coming up with ideas like, oh, we can put this mirror here and this mirror will be... Um, a hidden door to go into the bathroom. It was like a full size mirror. And he's like, yeah, it'll be actual a door. You can pull back and go into the bathroom. And he, he loves these hidden, hidden door concepts. I don't know. It's just the most fascinating thing. And I, I'm sitting here as a father. I mean, someone who's written about finding your mission and purpose and, and I'm just giddy for him. Now the truth be told, he might not be a builder and it doesn't even matter. Right. It's, it's the fact that he's found something that he's incredibly excited about to the point it's literally giving him like inspiration and more energy in life. I've never seen him like this in this, you know, many years of age, just five years of age. But it's it's really, really powerful to see what it does to your body and um, and just your overall energy and your mindset when you find something that you feel like you were put on this earth to do. And, and that's what this comes down to, right? He he believes without a doubt that he was put on this earth to be a builder. Who knows what will happen? We'll, we'll, we'll watch him grow and see what happens, right? And it's almost like I said, irrelevant at this point. But right now for him to find something, and I think this goes for us at any age to find something that we could say we're truly passionate about. And I mentioned this early, forget the money. He doesn't even ask if builders make money. He could care less. And I think that's the most important part is go back to your childhood when none of that stuff mattered, right? Because we get so caught up in life and worried, well, I can't do this as my purpose or mission because I won't be able to pay my bills. Forget the stinking money, right? Go back to when you were a child and what really got you excited, 
God did not put us on this earth to work a job or to do stuff for eight, 10 hours a day just to be able to pay our bills, knowing that we'd be miserable. We have to find more purpose in life. I said earlier, your job doesn't have to be your purpose, but it should at least give you some purpose in life, right? I, I really do believe life is way too short. And after you know hearing about all these people on their deathbeds, I and mean, there's a whole book written about this, that there wasn't a single person on the deathbed that said, gosh, I would have, I wish I would have w- uh, worked more or I, I wish I would have stuck at this job just because it paid more. No, they're all like, I wish I would have pursued more things that gave me purpose. It gave me more happiness. I wish I would have, I wish I would have taken those risks. I wish I would have done the things I truly felt like I was gifted to do, like be a builder at five years old. On, and I'm forgetting the money. I've, I've got a good friend. I'm not going to mention her name, but she grew up. And it had something similar to Jackson, Jackson, where everyone says, "Hey, you're you're a really good artist," and and uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of people like that. They're they're probably pretty legit artists, like you know maybe the best in their whole class, not the best in the world, but like in the best in their class, and maybe even the best in their city, right? And then all of a sudden, guess what? They get a little bit older. They maybe graduate high school, and, and then someone tells them this shame on whoever says stuff like this. Oh, uh, well, you probably want to forget art because you can't make a living at it. That's hogwash. You can make a living at anything, by the way, these days. I mean, there's people making millions of dollars a year as artists who've never even sold much. They just teach art on YouTube. I mean, there's you can literally make money at anything that you are passionate about these days. There is no excuse. But I want you to forget the money for a second. And this friend because she only thought about the money, right? Because that's what someone told her is, oh, you need to forget this passion, which was art, which you really, really excelled at and really gave her a ton of fulfillment. You need to just forget about that because you'll just be a starving artist, right? We've all heard that. Oh, you're a starving artist if you want to be an artist or an author, et cetera. And so she did. And so, you know, she did the normal process of going to college and and getting a job. And then, uh, you know, kind of woke up one day and, and I'm, I'm right now kind of realizing, oh, you know, I'm, you know, 30 something years old and and don't really love my job. It's not really giving me the purpose I thought it would, but started looking for more more purpose. And guess what? She went back to art because that was the thing as a child that gave her so much happiness and she could do it forever. And she was good at it and just, it came natural, right? It came easy to her. And so she started doing art not to make money, but for fulfillment. Now, listen to what happened. This is crazy. This is happening, like unfolding right now. And I'll be able to hopefully give an update on this, maybe even have her on the podcast. So once again, you know, does the traditional right life where, hey, go to graduate good grades and go to college, forget about the stuff that you like doing in the past, like let me be like telling my son, hey, forget about, you know, building um, on magnetic blocks or just there's no money in that stuff. You end up, you know, you got to know someone or you have to have millions of dollars to be a developer. Uh, just forget about that. And, and all of a sudden they, they poo poo the idea because someone, you know, says it's it's not a, not good for them for whatever reason. So she puts all that stuff aside, kind of puts art on the back burner, stops doing it for a while completely. And then all of a sudden is now looking for fulfillment a little bit later in life in mid thirties and says, you know what, I want to start doing art again. And for no monetary reasons whatsoever, just started investing in some art supplies and, and getting back into it and, and finally realizing, Hey, wow, I'm, I'm still, I still got it. Like I'm, I'm really good at this and I love doing it and started posting some of the pictures on her personal Instagram and Facebook page. And people started saying, oh my gosh, well, you're really talented. I I didn't even know you could, you could paint. I didn't even know you were an artist, right? She'd given up. None of her current friends even knew about it. I'm I'm sure some of her, you know, parents and old high school friends probably remembered, oh yeah, I remember when she was a good, a good artist. And so she continues to do it. It's good to get compliments and a little bit of praise and keeps doing it. And all of a sudden says, well, hey, I, I pay you to, you know, to do a piece of art for, for me to paint my, uh, my, my house or my, my, my dog, I think done a couple of, of pieces for, uh, for pets. And, uh, oh, I really love this. Uh, I really want a, a view of like this Island. I really like this, um, uh, the, the scenery here on the, on the water it loves painting water pictures. And all of a sudden started getting commissioned to do artwork. And, and I mean, literally like, Hey, I'll, yeah, I'll give you a few hundred dollars for that. It would cost me a whole lot more if I, I went and, and try to buy this. And so now the crazy irony is she did not put this as something to, you know, she did not put this first, meaning art, to make money. And the irony is she did it for for, for fulfillment. 
And the money started showing up at her feet. Literally, she wasn't asking for it. And people were throwing money at her to do art, to do the thing that she was passionate about. It's amazing what happens when you follow your heart and you do something that you know you were really designed to do that gives you tons of fulfillment and joy. And now, fast forward here, it's getting to the point where she might be able to quit her job to be a full-time artist. Like it's literally going to be potentially replacing her income because she's getting flooded with so many people who want to give her money to make art for her. It's crazy. You can't make this stuff up. So what did someone say about you when you were young? What did they say you were good at? What, 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 what did someone, maybe it was a teacher, maybe it was a parent, maybe it was even a friend. Maybe once again, you overheard someone way back in the day. I mean, go back 30, 40, 50 years. What, what, was, what did someone say, man, how so-and-so is just really good at this or wow. Like, man, they ran circles around you. They're really, it's just, a, it's natural and, and, and put the money aside. In fact, he, here's the ultimate test. This is it right here. If you were told that you'd get $10 million per year. That should be enough to get you by, right? 10 million bucks a year. So this is, this is real. And, and write this down. If you're struggling with your mission or purpose, this is going to give you the answer right here. So if I told you that I got a sponsor for you, God, he's going to give you $10 million a year. He's going to put it into your account every year, enough for you to live on, plus some. <laughs> but there's one catch. The only catch is you have to spend time doing what you were put on this earth to do. What would that be? What would be your mission? So I'm going to repeat that. You're told you're going to get $10 million per year, but the only catch is you have to spend time every day, every week doing your mission. What would it be? Think about that, right? Because that's really where people are getting hung up. I, I hear the comments. I get emails every week about this. And the comment is, oh, well, I, I can't pursue that because oh, then I have to quit my job and I can't. It all comes back to money. It all comes back to money. And, and, and there's so many instances, right? I mean, including Luke and I, right? We didn't make any money with Salt Strong. Now we're making money. The money started showing up at our feet once we truly just went all in and yeah, it was scary. It was, it, there were some times that were legitimately tough and put stress on our family, but man, we were having a blast and we're doing what we truly believe we were put on this earth to do. Same with, with my friend, the, the artist. I mean, there's countless stories when you really pursue what you feel like you're called to do. And for some of you, it's not ever going to turn into a job. And that's 100% okay. It's going to be a side thing. It's going to be something you do on the weekends and nights that just truly gives you passion and fulfillment. But I think the best way to do it, because the money part is what confuses people, is take the money out of the equation and just assume, and you really got to feel this sense of security that, all right, I'm going to be taken care of. I'm going to get 10 million bucks a year, a million, whatever the number, it doesn't even matter. I just threw a massive number out there. So it would just take all any insecurities away and give you full security to just sit there with a clean slate and say, all right, I'm going to make all this money. I'm going to be taken care of, but I'm going to be forced to spend time doing something that truly gives me fulfillment every day. Something that, that I truly believe I was put on this earth to do something that, uh, that I'm great at something that comes natural to me and something that I, that I can do for three, four hours a, a day and, and not get distracted and just feel like I'm having fun. Cause once you unlock that, once you find that you're going to be just like my son, little five-year-old waking up an extra hour early. I do that when, when I'm truly in the zone and I'm feeling like I'm on track with purpose and everything is aligned. I, I wake up with just more energy. It's like, I can't get sick. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it seems crazy, but like, it's just like, you're not invincible, but just everything starts flowing and, uh, and, and you have more energy, you have more excitement, you just have more zest for, uh, for life. So this is so important. There are too many people walking around miserable and, and, you know, living a life that they don't really even enjoy and they don't want to be a part of, but they do it because, oh, I got to do it to pay the bills. And I know there's a time for that. I, I, I realize a lot of us have bills. We have stresses. I have them as well. I got a family of five. Uh, I, I know what that's like. And I know what it's like to have hardly any money left. I mean, I remember getting down to our last couple hundred dollars in our checking and savings account. I mean, we had exhausted both and that was not fun. It was not a fun feeling. 
<laughs> However, I knew I was doing what I was passionate about. So was my wife. We knew what we were following our mission and we weren't going to get distracted. And all of a sudden doors just kept opening one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. And all of a sudden tons of doors are opening and all of a sudden things are slowly getting easier. And then all of a sudden it was just like abundance started coming into our lives. Uh, It's wild and almost unexplainable, but that was from just following our hearts, following and and praying every day. I mean, this is a you know big part about having faith is uh is praying and listening to God, uh, asking Him to open up the right doors and to bring all the right people into your path every single day, every single week, and uh, and and just asking for guidance. Right? I, I I talk to God every single morning. And that's one of the things I still continue to ask for. God is just guidance, making sure I'm on the right path, right? And, and, and if our mission changes, like my son, like I said, by the time he's 10, it might be something different and that's okay. But it, the point is to have something that, that I made him write it down for a reason, to have something that you write down and that you can focus on and get excited about every single day. And it's 100% okay if it changes. It's 100% okay if it's not what you do for a full-time job right now. And it's a uh, it's 100% okay to be something odd, right? Uh, that, that maybe no one's even heard about before. But if it gets you excited, it gives you purpose, then, I mean, that's it. That What, what else could we possibly want in life, right? So I hope this was helpful. If uh, you have any questions or, or thoughts on this, hit me up, joe at saltstrong.com. I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, have an amazing upcoming week, depending on what day you're hearing this. And um, and like I said, my private email, joe, J-O-E, at saltstrong.com. Otherwise, I will talk to you on the next episode. Live life with purpose. Cause this year, it's in my soul, it was pain.